transform. We have some series that we already know about. Well, for example, I know that the sum n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n. Well, that's a power series for a function we already know. It's just the power series for one over one minus x. And we've got some operations that we can apply to power series. Well, we can differentiate a power series. We can integrate a power series term by term. I can multiply together a power series and I can divide power series. Now we can put together the series that we know and the operations that we can do in order to build new power series. Well, here's our goal. I'd like to find a power series for the function one over one minus x quantity squared. We can do this in two different ways. Well, let's notice something about this. This is the derivative of one over one minus x. <laughs> Why is that? Well, let's just work it out, right? This is the derivative I'm claiming of one minus x to the minus first power. Well, differentiating this using the power rule, that's negative one times one minus x to the negative second power times the derivative of the inside by the chain rule, which is just multiplying this by uh, another copy of minus one. So this is minus one times one minus x to the negative second power times minus one. Well, what happens, right, these minus ones cancel, and what I'm left with is just one minus x to the minus second power. Well, I could write that as one over one minus x squared. That's exactly what I've got here. So the derivative of one over one minus x is this function that I'm interested in. So let's differentiate the power series term by term. So this is the derivative of the sum, n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n. And then, like I said, differentiating term by term, this is the sum, n goes from one to infinity of the derivative of the nth term, the derivative of x to the n. Note that I changed from n equals zero to n equals one because when I differentiate the uh, n equals zero term, that's the derivative of a constant, which is just zero. So I'm gonna start here with n equals one. All right, so this is the sum, n goes from one to infinity. What's the derivative of x to the n? Well, by the power rule, that's n times x to the n minus one. And now if I don't like having the uh, n minus one there, I could re-index this series, right? What happens when I plug in n equals one? Well, that's one times x to the zero. And then what happens when I plug in n equals two? Well, that's two times x to the first. What happens when I plug in n equals three? That's three times x squared and so on. So I could rewrite this series as just the sum n goes from zero to infinity of n plus one times x to the nth power. And there we go. I've written down a power series for the function one over one minus x quantity squared. Of course, if I don't like thinking like this, if I don't like differentiating, I could also approach this problem by just trying to multiply together two copies of the original power series. Well, what I mean is that the sum of x to the n, n goes from zero to infinity, is one over one minus x. And that means that if I square this side and square this side, I should get a formula then, a power series for one over one minus x quantity squared. But how do I write that as a power series? Well, let's at least get started. Let's at least figure out what the first few terms are. So I'm just gonna write down the sum of x to the n, or the first few terms of it. So that's one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. And I'm squaring that, so I'm multiplying it by itself. So I'll just write down the same thing again. One plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. Now I wanna figure out what happens when I multiply these things together. So what do I get? Well, one times one, that's one. Now how many x terms do I get here? Well, I've got a one times an x or I've got an x times a one, but there's no other way to multiply these things and get an x. So there's plus two x. How many x squareds do I get out? Well, I could multiply this one times this x squared, multiply this x times this x, or I could multiply this x squared times this one. So I got three x squared. And there's no other way to get an x squared out. Now, how could I get an x cubed? Well, I could multiply one times x cubed, or x times x squared, or this x squared times this x, or this x cubed times one. So that gives me four ways of getting an x cubed term. And then I'll write plus dot, dot, dot. 
Now, maybe you believe that that pattern continues. Well, it certainly looks like this is giving me the sum n goes from zero to infinity of n plus one times x to the nth power. I mean, n equals zero is one times x to the zero. n equals one is two times x to the first. n equals two is three times x squared. n equals three is four times x cubed, and so on. To make that more rigorous, we probably have to talk about induction. Or we could just bring up a theorem on multiplying power series. Well, here's our theorem for multiplying power series. The product of this power series and this power series is given by this power series. And it's a little bit complicated to see how the coefficients affect it, right? Here the coefficients are a sub n, here the coefficients are b sub n, and when I multiply these together, I get this convolved series, the sum i goes from zero to n of a sub i times b sub n minus i. Now we can apply that theorem. Well, in this case, our formula for one over one minus x is just where all the coefficients are one. So if I multiply one over one minus x by one over one minus x, then I get one over one minus x squared. So that means all the a sub i's and b sub n minus i's are all just one. So here is a power series for one over one minus x squared. Let's simplify. Well, the sum i goes from zero to n of just one, well, that's one plus one plus one, but it's n plus one ones. So I can rewrite this power series as just the sum n goes from zero to infinity of n plus one times x to the n, and that's exactly what we got before by using derivatives.